This is KGW News at Noon. Three days since city officials vowed to end this massive occupation in North Portland, and nothing has changed. People there have surrounded a home called the Red House. They say they're trying to stop the eviction of a black indigenous family who's lived along Mississippi Avenue for generations. Hello everyone, I'm Brenda Braxton. So here's the thing about what's happening right now. The mayor has vowed to break up that camp and the police chief says officers will use force if it's necessary. But it's been days and the neighborhood is living in a tense state of limbo. Maggie Vespa is live along North Mississippi this noon. Maggie, businesses are yeah, boarding Brenda, up right. and the way, adjusting their hours. Way, kind of show you where we are in relation to the camp and the barricade. It's just down Mississippi at Skidmore. But yeah, we talked to a couple of business owners who closed on Tuesday when police first moved in and tried unsuccessfully to break up the camp. And then we have the owner over here across the street of Pilot House Distilling. They've been closed for three days and counting, not because of the protest or the camp itself. They say those people have actually been very nice, but because the owner's afraid of what's going to happen when police actually do show up again. I want to give you kind of the gist of the backstory here. The Kinney family had owned the Red House, as it's now being called, since the 50s. In 2018, they lost their home to foreclosure, but they refused to leave. They blamed their financial troubles on predatory loans dating back to the early 2000s. Cut to September. A judge ruled had to go, adding the eviction moratorium put in place amid the pandemic does not apply in this case. And days later, later deputies came armed, the family says, and ordered them out. And that's kind of when a protest formed around the house. It's been growing ever since. And now the mayor is telling police to use all legal means necessary to break it up. The chief of police last night said officers will use force if they have to. And meanwhile, you've got business owners like Christina Carey bracing for that clash whenever it comes. And in her case, she's just keeping Pilot House Distilling closed. Safety definitely comes first uh, for the employees and the customers. Um, uh, you know, my biggest concern is something takes a turn suddenly. Um, you know, if, you know, gas starts getting used, I mean, that's going to go right into our business as well as our neighbors. So by the way, and again, here's the shot of that business closed for day three at this point. This morning, we reached out to every sitting member of city council, including Mayor Ted Wheeler, also including both of the incoming members of the Portland City Council to ask them what they think should happen now that we're on day three with these promises, what they think about the Kinney family story, what should happen to that family and the home that they want to stay in. We have yet to hear back from any of the members of the city council, including those incoming ones. But again, we reached out this morning, so we'll let you know if and when that changes. For now, Brenda, back to you. Yeah, I know you'll stay after it. Maggie, thank you. A turning now to the race for a coronavirus vaccine. It is a huge day as all eyes are on the FDA. An advisory panel is meeting right now to decide whether to approve Pfizer's COVID vaccine. Tracy Potts has details on the process. Today, an FDA panel will recommend whether to approve America's first vaccine. Our plan is to take their recommendations into account for our decision making and make a decision shortly thereafter. Again, it really depends upon the complexity of the issues discussed, uh, but we intend to act quickly. Pfizer's Michigan plant ready to ship thousands of doses to more than 600 sites nationwide. This very small but very powerful chip is on every vaccine package and it tells us GPS exact location. There are new concerns about the vaccine after two British workers suffered an allergic reaction. It likely is an unusual and rare effect. Health officials insist it's safe and there will be enough for everyone. We will have enough doses for any American who wants a vaccine by the end of the second quarter of 2021. President Trump's focus, a new election challenge, joining 17 states asking the U.S. Supreme Court to overturn election results and throw out votes in Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. It's uh, simply mad. I've never seen anything quite like this before. Legal experts are skeptical. This case is hopeless. On Capitol Hill, finger pointing continues. Political posturing and press releases from one side or the other won't put food on the table. This need not be rocket science. Lawmakers still working on a deal to prevent millions from losing unemployment and being evicted. 
over the holidays. And they're trying to keep the federal government running. The House has agreed to extend funding one more week in hopes of coming up with a long-term deal and avoiding a shutdown over the holidays. Tracy Potts, NBC News. And one programming note, as soon as the vote happens on Pfizer's vaccine, we will bring you an NBC News special report. We're expecting that sometime after 1230 this afternoon. You can catch it live here on KGW and online at KGW.com. Oregon reported another 30 people died of COVID yesterday. It's the third time this month the state has reported at least that many. Since the start of December, the virus has killed more than 200 people. Meanwhile, the numbers are going up nationwide. For the first time yesterday, the U.S. reported more than 3,000 people died from COVID. If you're on social media, you've likely seen claims about that spike and its impact. Jason Puckett looks at one of those posts in this Verify report. A viral image compares the, quote, deadliest days in American history. It starts with the Galveston hurricane, the Battle of Antietam and the Civil War, and then 9-11. After that, it shows four days from last week, which are claimed to now be ranked among the deadliest days in U.S. history. Now, that's a shocking comparison that COVID deaths are passing a Pearl Harbor level tragedy every day. But is it true? Have we really seen some of the deadliest days in U.S. history this month? To find out, we compared each number with records from the National Park Service, the NOAA, the 9-11 Commission, and COVID data from the CDC and Johns Hopkins. Now, we checked each number, and they are accurate, or at least within estimated ranges. But this chart is missing a few key events. The Spanish flu in 1918 was estimated to have 6,300 deaths per day at its peak. In the Civil War Battle of Gettysburg, estimates say the deadliest day of battle saw about 3,100 deaths, and the San Francisco earthquake of 1906 is estimated to have resulted in about 3,000 deaths. So those need to be added to this chart. But the COVID numbers are accurate. And yes, since the start of December, we've seen some of the deadliest days in U.S. history. That's verified. Folks, if you have other claims or questions you want us to look into, Send us an email. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. This afternoon, Portland residents can apply for another round of $500 cash cards. They're meant for people struggling financially during the pandemic. 4,000 people will be selected in a lottery for those prepaid debit cards. You do have to be over 18 and live in Portland. There are also salary caps. For example, a family of two can't make more than $59,000 a year. A family of four maxes out at 73,000. The application portal is only open today from 3 to 6 p.m. Just visit the website pdxassist.com.